So for as long as I've known Brian, he's always wanted a birthday pie. And I've never made him a birthday pie, so I thought I'd keep that tradition going. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica, and like I said, I'm making a birthday treat for Brian. Well, okay, it's actually a week after his birthday by the time you're seeing this, and I'm filming this after his birthday, and we've already eaten the entire birthday nice cream cake on our own, like entirely, just between me and Brian. But what I did was, if you watched on the live stream we had last week, I made him a Spumoni nice cream cake, and it was super fancy, and it was my first attempt at putting it all together, and it went really well, so I thought I would go ahead and recreate it on a video and share it with you guys. So yes, you heard right, it's a Spumoni nice cream cake. Now what does that mean? It is nice cream, which is basically ice cream that's been made with bananas or fruit as the uh, base of it. I guess that's what nice cream is. I don't know, people just call it nice cream. Um, but we have three layers. We have chocolate, pistachio, and cherry. And each of them is super tasty. And then when you layer it all together, it turns out to be just great. But my favorite part of the entire cake is the crust. So we're gonna start with the crust and it's just three simple ingredients and you can add a fourth ingredient if you want to. I like to do it, but I'll show you right now. Basically, we're gonna start out with one cup of old fashioned rolled oats and I'm going to use a food processor for this. So I'm gonna put everything into, um, actually just right now, I'm just gonna put the oats and the almonds. So I have a cup of almonds. Now these are raw almonds and we buy the unsalted ones, um, of course, and they're not roasted or anything like that. So I'm gonna dump both of these into the food processor. All right, so we're dumping all this in here. Now, I'm basically looking to get this to kind of a meal consistency. So I'm going to put on the lid and is it plugged in? It is plugged in. I'm going to just like give it a couple of pulses. take a look at it. Let's get the spatula out and take a look. So you don't, it's not going to turn into like a full on flower, but it'll be a little bit more chunky than a flower. <laughs> I call it a meal. I don't know. Is that right? So that's pretty darn good. And now to make all this come together and stick, to each other and also to sweeten it, we are going to add in some dates. Now, I have some fancy medjool dates. They're fancy, see, it says fancy on here. Um, and there are 10 of them. Now, I have already pitted these dates. Do not put dates that are not pitted into the food processor or blender or anything like that. You will, it will not be pleasant, just trust me. Don't ask me how I know. Um, but, and it wasn't me, by the way, who did it. <clears throat> I like to just break these in half. Now these have been sitting out for a little bit. I, I store them in the freezer and then um, I actually just uh, run some hot water over them to rinse them off, pit them, and then they've been sitting out just at room temperature for a while while we've been prepping everything for this. So they should be good. I'm just gonna break them in half, give it a little bit of extra help. And my hands are covered in sticky dateness right now. Hold on. Okay. So I also like to add some almond extract. Now, I don't know, some of you might give me flack and be like, that's ah, not whole food plant-based. Well, I mean, it's plant-based, it's not whole food, whatever, I don't know. But this stuff is freaking magic and it smells amazing and oh my gosh like I live I just I can't even I don't eat yeah and I love the flavor that it gives I know there's a bunch of almonds in here but it just gives this extra almondy flavor to it that I love so I'm gonna add a teaspoon and I have this super cute little measuring uh what would you call this like a beaker 
and um, I'm going to attempt to not spill. I'm going to go ahead and do it over here, just in case. It's very precise. It's like science. Okay, so now I'm going to pour that in. Mm, and you can just smell all the almondy goodness that that gives. Okay. Now we're going to basically keep doing this until it incorporates into kind of like a dough, crusty kind of thing, consistency. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so now let's let's get a little close up of that. So you can see how it's starting to form little clumps. Now, do not take a bite of this because you'll probably just want to eat the whole freaking thing because it's delicious. Don't do it. Just just leave it be. Let's get our pan. I have my pan here. Now this is a spring form pan. If you guys don't have one of these, it's a really cool pan. It has a buckle. And don't do that. You, uh, you have two pieces. So you have the bottom and you have this part. And basically then you can, when you buckle it, it tightens. So then if you're making like anything that might stick or whatever, you can just basically release and it comes out and it's super cool. So I'm going to build up my layers in this, starting with the crust. So the crust, we're basically just going to dump in here. Whee! All of it in there. Okay. And then we're gonna press it, right? We're just gonna press it in and make it nice and you want it nice, like you want to pat it down a lot so that it really comes together and like sticks together. So first I'm just going to use a spatula and kind of like, um, just kind of even it out a little bit more. And then I'm actually going to take a flat bottomed measuring cup and kind of go through and just like squish it really so that it's really good and pressed in there. And you can do this with your hands too. I mean, really honestly, like Brian and I are going to eat this entire cake. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, as long as you have clean hands and all that, if you're serving it to guests, well, I mean, I guess you would want clean hands no matter what, because that's just gross. But anyway, so yeah, you're just going to go through and like kind of squish it, get it all nice and even, use your hands, use your measuring cup, but you do really want to pat it down because you don't want it to like crumble apart, you know? You know what I'm saying? Get it? Get what I'm putting down? <laughs> Ryan's blinking at me. I think that means I should be done. I think he's decided that I've spent enough time on this part. All right, so we have it all pressed in there and it's nice and uniform. And I'm gonna put it in the oven. I've got the oven on 350. I'm gonna do it for about 12 minutes just until the outside edges kind of start to brown a little bit. You could probably not bake it at all if you wanted to, but it's just fun to bake, so why not bake? 12 minutes. So you can see it just started to brown on the edges a little bit. You could probably go a little longer, but this worked out really well last time, so I'm gonna stick with this. Now, what I'm going to do is not burn my face with it. I'm going to let this sit on the counter and cool for just a bit, and then I'm going to put it in the freezer to get it really nice and cold before I start doing the layering. So you have to have some patience when it comes to this, but now, cool down. All right, so our crust is in the freezer and it is all the way cooled down. So now we're gonna work on the first layer of the nice cream, which is the chocolate, my favorite. 
So you guys know I made a three ingredient chocolate and ice cream in another video and we'll link to that if you just want to learn even more because I'm sure I had like tons of information in that video about how I do it and all that stuff. But I'm actually gonna do a simple two ingredient version of that for this recipe. You can, you can add some almond milk if you want. I would say depending on how experienced you are with making nice cream in your Vitamix, um, when I first started, I really wanted that almond milk to help me like help it blend. But now that I'm more experienced with using the tamper and doing all that, I just let my bananas thaw out a little bit first. And then I'm gonna add cocoa powder and that's literally it, just two ingredients. And it makes it, the less almond milk you use, the more, you know, that creamy, like less icy kind of texture you're gonna get. So um, for the bananas, I actually, the way I measure them out is when I freeze my bananas, I freeze them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and then into like these little chunks. I'm gonna lift this, this is very full. Um, into these little chunks and um, then I put them into a Ziploc bag and I use a one quart size freezer Ziploc bag. And that's how I measure it because I stuff it until I cannot fit one more piece of banana in there and that's how much I use to make my ice cream. So it's about, well, it's a quart, um, you know, so you're, it's about, I find six like average regular kind of size bananas, um, but it's gonna vary obviously depending on your bananas. Now for, oh, hi Oliver, Oliver decided to join us. Um, now for the, the cocoa, I like the Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa, that's my favorite one. Um, I like everything really, really dark chocolate, so that's what I'm gonna be using, and I'm using a full quarter cup of that. So I already have that like leveled out, measured out into my thing here. So I'm literally just gonna put both of those things into the Vitamix. Now, if you don't have a high-speed blender, you're gonna have to definitely add almond milk if you're using a regular blender, but check out the blog post for tips for all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm just gonna put these in there and then I'm gonna put it on high speed. I'm gonna use my tamper. And the key is to push down towards all four corners, alternate toward the four corners to keep everything moving. That's the key for this. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And then we are going to literally get that crust out and put the chocolate layer on and get it freezing. All right, so like I said, I'm going to put the bananas in. Actually, I'm gonna put the cocoa powder in first because I find that it, it does less of a like mushroom cloud of cocoa powder if you put it in first. Put that in. And then I'm going to add in my bananas. And these have been sitting out just for a few minutes, but Hopefully they will blend. All right, so I blended this for a little bit and then I used my little lovely, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Underblade spatula. <laughs> I'm being mouthed from Brian. I use that to kind of, uh, some of the cocoa powder is like kind of sticking to the side a little bit. And if you, you add the almond milk in, that will help with that. But I went ahead and scraped down the sides a little bit. Now I'm gonna blend it for just a little bit more until it is done. Oh crud, and I realized too, I forgot my headphones and now my hearing is ruined forever and now I'm just like, whatever. Peef, this is your fault. He's a bad assistant, okay. I'm gonna say that's done, so let's get the crust out and get this in there. All right, so you can see, can you see? I'm showing, I'm trying to show you. So you have the lovely creamy nice cream, and we're going to add it into this lovely crust as our bottom layer. And if I would have done the almond milk, it would have just been a little bit thinner, but it's still tasty. It's just, I really wanted that creamy, creamy, creamy texture. Okay, we've got all of it in there and then you can use your little spatula to sort of like put it all in a nice even layer. You wanna make sure you really get it towards the sides because last time I ended up with some air bubbles and I didn't really like that. 
it didn't look 100% perfect. All right, so we're gonna call that ready to go in the freezer. I know I spent a lot of time doing that. You don't have to do it as perfect if you don't want to. So while that's setting up in the freezer with the chocolate layer, we're gonna go in and make the pistachio and the cherry ice cream layers and then store them in these containers in the fridge until they are ready to be added to the party. Um, so for the pistachio flavor, this one was the most challenging. Like honestly, I was a little bit nervous on how I was gonna get the pistachio flavor, but I think I nailed it the first time I tried it. I just kind of threw everything together and it worked out. I don't know how, but it did. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the pistachios, which we use these raw um, pistachio nut meat halves and pieces from Trader Joe's. This is by far the best price that I've seen. I did link to another one on Amazon in the blog if you can't find these or you don't have a Trader Joe's nearby. Um, you do want to buy the ones that are already shelled, obviously, because that would just take forever. And no other ingredient, just pistachios, raw, no salt or anything added like that. So that is what I'm going to add in first. And I have a cup worth of that. Now, in order to get these kind of blended up and not be, you know, like, just nuts, um, I decided that I would add in some almond milk. So this is unsweetened vanilla almond milk, so that's a half of a cup. And another reason I use the almond milk is because I am going to throw a secret ingredient, which is spinach. Now this might sound weird to put spinach in pistachio and ice cream, but spinach, you know, people add it to smoothies because it doesn't really add too much of a flavor really that much, but it adds all the nutrients and benefits. Um, but what I'm looking for here is that green color. And I was afraid that this pistachios alone wouldn't give me that bright green color that I really wanted from the pistachio layer. So I added in some spinach and I think it worked out really good. So go ahead and add that in. Do, 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 do. And it doesn't have to be an exact amount, but I just did a couple handfuls of frozen spinach. And I'm gonna blend this up before I add in my bananas. So this is going to just basically, everything is just gonna like get pulverized together and it's all gonna be smooth. Oh, I forgot my headphones again. I always forget my headphones. Hmm. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in the bananas, which I have the same amount I did for the chocolate. Come on, there they go. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did. Use the tamper, hit down towards the four corners, blend on high until it is all creamy and incorporated and nice creamy, nice creamy. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see. Let's take a look here. All right, so you can see it's nice and creamy, it's nice and green, and everything is incorporated. It is going to be super tasty. When I first tasted this, I seriously like, it was, it was kind of early in the morning. I do these things early in the morning, okay? And I ran into the bedroom and Brian was sleeping and I had a spoon of it and I was like, taste this! <laughs> he was like, what the heck? What am I tasting? But then he was like, wow, that's so good. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna add this into the this little container. It's like a double walled kind of container that will keep it nice and cold until I'm ready to add that layer because you really do wanna have the layers frozen pretty solid before you go ahead and like add everything in. Now, if you want, you can do the extra mile. I have this nut grinder and I used to bake a lot and I used to use this and I never use it anymore. So I was thinking if I put, well, for the topping, I'm gonna use this definitely. But if I put some of the pistachios in here and then 
let's see, I want coarse or fine. I think I want fine. So I'm gonna go this way and it's going to, here, I'll show you guys. All right, so if you just grind them up a bit in here, you could add some extra little bits into the nice cream. And then you'll have like extra fun little bits because spumoni is supposed to have like, you know, nuts and fruit throughout it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna add some in there and then I'm going to like just swirl it all together and then it will be all incorporated in the layer. It's finally time for the final layer. It's the cherry layer. So basically, wait, did I say basically again? It is the same amount of bananas and you're gonna put it into the Vitamix. Now, if you don't have a Vitamix, just, you might be able to use a regular blender, but also a food processor is good for nice cream, I hear, if you don't have a Vitamix. So just a tip there. Then we're gonna add some frozen dark sweet pitted cherries. Now I just buy these frozen. I, I actually like to buy them at Trader 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 Joe's <laughs> Trader Joe's <laughs> uh, normally, but uh, yeah. So you're gonna put in about 10 ounces worth of these cherries. Now you can play around with the balance of cherry to banana all you want. It's really not a science. It's just these two ingredients. Um, but I'm gonna put my cherries in. Okay. And then it's the same spiel. Now you might notice that this is a bit lighter. Now I have to fix my hair. Is it okay? Uh, it's a bit lighter than the one if you saw on our uh, anniversary, uh, no, not anniversary, birthday live stream. And I decided to use more banana. So let's taste it and see how that worked out for me. Let's get it on into the little container that I've already made dirty with the camper. So for this layer, I decided I was going to get extra fancy and add some pieces of chopped up cherries. Now these are frozen cherries that were fresh cherries. And I thought that they might just chop a little better because it, I don't know, the ones that are frozen are all like soggy and frozen and stuff. I don't know. I mean, these are frozen too, but they were fresh first. So I have them in the freezer in this container like this. And then I'm going to top the cake with some of these too. Now these do still have pits in them. So, you know, yeah. But I'm going to remove the pits and chop them up. And so I'm going to add these into here. I'm going to add these into here and make a nice little layer of contrast with the extra, you know, and then I'm gonna obviously like stir all that in and stuff like that. But first I'm gonna take my photos because that's what I do. So yeah, last layer going in the freezer. The chocolate has been freezing for almost an hour. At an hour I'm gonna check it and then I think I'm gonna try to add the pistachio layer in. So I didn't, I never said this would be easy. I just said it, I mean, it is easy. It's just a lot of steps. So, you know, but it comes out looking amazing in the end, I think so. And tasting amazing. So let's get this in the freezer. All right, so it has been about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes that since this layer has been set to freeze the chocolate. But you just wanna make sure that it's kind of like when you touch it, it's not like super soft um, so that it doesn't, the layers don't end up mixing together and all that. Cause you wanna have nice clean, clear lines and make it look all pretty. But next I'm gonna add the pistachio layer, which I'm just gonna give a stir to make sure that I get all of those pistachios mixed in there that I added later. And you want this, you don't wanna leave this to freeze too long or it'll be too solid to add, you know, to your other layer and then it will be really hard to work with. So you do want it to be quite soft still when you, when you do this. Um, 
but you're just gonna kind of carefully put this layer on. Try not to mess with it too much because you don't wanna, you know, blend the two layers together. I think that is pretty level. So I'm just gonna give it another little tap. <laughs> and then I'm gonna get it back in the freezer immediately. And then we're gonna come back and add the cherry layer. It's time to add the final layer. So I know this is taking a lot of patience, but we're gonna add the cherry layer to the pistachio layer. So you can see I mixed all the little cherry bits into there and it looks all pretty. So let's, let's put it on. Okay, so once you get everything all smoothed over and just how you want it to look, I like to go ahead and add the pistachios around the edge because then they'll freeze in and really stick. Um, I used my little nut chopper thing and used the fine grate to chop these up. I'm gonna spill them on myself. So then I had all these lovely little uh, pieces of pistachio that will look super, 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 super pretty around the edge. So you just have to be really careful Look how pretty that looks. And there you have it. This giant freaking masterpiece of a cake. <laughs> is ready to go back in the freezer ASAP. So we will see you tomorrow after it freezes. You really wanna go like 24 hours or so just to make sure it's really frozen, but we'll see you tomorrow for the taste test. It's the next day and I decided I was gonna change my shirt, but then you know what I thought? Have you ever watched the British Baking Show, the Great British Baking Show, or what do they call it there? They call it the Great British Bake Off. They're always wearing the same clothes all weekend. Like they never change clothes. And you know it's filmed over two days because they show them coming in on the second day. So I figured, you know what? If the British Baking, Great British Baking Show can do it, so can I. So I'm gonna unveil the cake. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys and pretend like this is the first time I'm unveiling this cake. I did wake up early this morning and I the first thing I did was run out here and unbuckle it and pull it up. And it didn't exactly turn out like I wanted it to. I was kind of bummed out, but I'm getting over it and I'm just gonna show it to you guys. So let's 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 go through everything here. So here is the cake. So you just, with a springform pan, you just unbuckle this. Ooh, be careful when you do this, by the way. It's still frozen. It will come off easily. You should go a lot slower than I just did there. You just kind of want to like ease it off and it will come off and it will, you know, you just got to kind of like work with it and it will come off. So this is the unveiling of the cake. All right, can you see that? Um, so it didn't exactly create the straight lines that I had last time I made this cake and I was kind of bummed out about that. But I think what happened is I didn't let the chocolate layer set quite long enough. I should have gone for like, maybe I would recommend doing even like three or four hours before you, if you really want those clean, clean lines, I would wait for several hours in between each layer. And also it doesn't help that when we film, we turn our refrigerator off because it makes noise. And so you have to imagine how many times we filmed, made things, put it in the freezer, but turn the refrigerator off, turn the refrigerator back on and all that. And so I think that all kind of came together and worked against me. And I thought about making a whole new one, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna show it like it is. I still think it looks pretty like it is. And I can't wait to cut into it, 
but I have to take photos of it first. So this is what it looks like right now. So I hope you guys are super excited to see what it looks like on the inside, but you have to stay tuned for another minute. All right, we're back in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I said all right again. So that was an adventure trying to get this sliced and uh, photographed and all that. Um, so I will put some tips below in the blog post on what you can do to make sure that your cake turns out with the layers perfectly intact. And also I recommend actually when we did Brian's, we froze that for like two or three days and it was solid when I took it out. And so, you know, with nice cream, it never gets like soup. If you're making like creamy kind of nice cream, it doesn't get like super, you know, I don't know, solid kind of yeah. state. And so it stays a bit soft. When you cut this, you do not need to leave this out at all. Like take it straight out of your freezer, cut a slice out and then enjoy. Do not, you know, this is not a, this is not like a Dairy Queen ice cream cake where they're like, take it out of the freezer five or 10 minutes before your whatever they say. Um, just leave it in the freezer as much as possible. Put it in the back of the freezer. Yes. It needs to stay frozen. If but, you have a separate freezer that you can make even colder, put it there. Yes. But you can see when we were slicing it that the first slice is always the most difficult to get out. Of course, like some of the little crusts kind of stuck to the bottom a little bit. But the other slices will come out like perfectly. I swear, like last time they all came out perfectly. Yeah, the first one was always the and hardest. And I know it's just going to be delicious. So do you want to try? Yeah, yeah. All right. You go let's, ahead. I, I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know which layer. I kind of want to get a little bit of each. Then you do that. So, uh, mm. this is Ooh. this is me trying the cherry, <laughs> the slightly very slightly different variation of the cherry. Yes, I'm just gonna dig right in here. Okay, I like the little bits of cherry mm. that you put in there. That really did add like a lot to mm -hmm. a lot to the texture. Let's see about the pistachio. You're just gonna inhale this cake, aren't you? It's melting. <laughs> I know. All right, pistachio. Mmm. Mmm. I like it, and I like okay. the little bits of pistachio in there. The pistachio ice cream is definitely like the winner for me. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your chocolate. Chocolate is like melting. Mmm. <laughs> super dark chocolate. Yeah, so even I, I like that. And I, I'm not big into like really dark chocolatey things. But that crust, mm. Mm. Come on, there we go. That crust is like so good. Mmm. Mmm. I dig it. So I like to eat it. We ate the entire other one, so mm. I've had practice eating this. The way I like to eat it is I like to start with the top and eat the cherry layer with like the pistachios and everything. Then get the pistachio layer. Then I like to eat the chocolate layer with the crust. But it's also really nice just to take a bite with like all of the flavors. That's what I prefer to in do. There and a little bit of the crust. Just, this is wow. really difficult to do while you're holding it. But Sorry. No, it's not your fault. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so good. Oh my God. It was an absolute winner, my dear. Mm. I think it tastes a little better when it's like melting a little bit. Mm. I think the flavors, when it's really cold, you don't get as much like, I don't know, is that yeah. a thing? I get it now. Um, but yeah, seriously, I'm excited to see what you guys can create with this. It's obviously a little bit labor intensive. It's a labor of love. Um, but, it, and it's not, this is not, don't, okay. I know you guys are like, how many slices? calories in our slice of this. I don't want to know. This is a celebration cake. This is not something that we're going to make and eat every single day. Mm -hmm. It's it, it was a cake that I kind of designed in my head. Actually, after one of you commented on one of our other videos and was like, you should make a layered like nice cream cake or something. I think some I think somebody actually said an ice cream cake and I was like, wait, what? An ice cream cake? And then that's when my brain started going. So. I don't remember what you originally thought of. But I, I was the one that definitely suggested you do spumoni. Yeah, spumoni, of course. Because spumoni is like, I mean, it's just such a good treat anyway. And so to like actually have it like this, like a whole food plant-based ice cream cake version of it, it's just so good. blows my mind. But yes, it's a celebration cake. You're going to definitely have to make some more you're of this gonna, pistachio ice cream just for gonna, me though. You're not going to lose weight eating this. It's not a low calorie food. I don't even want to know how many calories, like I said, but mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. We need to stop eating. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can close this out. But it's one of those things 
that just kind of... Do I have chocolate on my face? No. It's one of those things that... It's just nice to be able to make something that is, you know, in the realm of what we actually eat mm -hmm. for a celebration and feel good about it and be like, you know what? You can be really creative with this stuff and Absolutely. you can make really awesome tasting desserts and that kind of stuff. And no, you don't need to enjoy them every single day if you're trying to lose weight. But I have a question. Yes. So are you sad I didn't make you a birthday pie? Every year. But didn't this make up for it? This was definitely a very, very good ice cream cake. It was <laughs> absolutely fantastic, and I did really, really love it. The thought uh, bubble over Brian's head, like, I really just want a pie. But uh, I, Next year. I'm, I'm looking forward to even experimenting with this sort of thing uh, uh, myself. So, you know, maybe in the future you'll see my ice cream Are cake as well. Are you going to make me a cake for my birthday? Probably. Because I, I already have my cake planned. No, I'm going to make you a pie. I don't want no pie. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're funny. Yes. All right. Well, we need to get to this before it completely melts. Um, tech out. Tech out. Tech out. Tech out. Tech out the blog post. Check out the blog post that is linked in the description below, or I always pin it like as the first comment on the video as well, mm -hmm. because in that blog post, you'll be able to get even more tips on how to make your perfect ice cream, nice cream, whatever you want to call it, cake. And also you can see all the photos that I took of it and of the one that I made for Brian, which are really pretty and all that. And you can get a printable recipe. I mm -hmm. mean, what's more, what do you, what more do you want from me people? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Should I go through the rest of it? Yes. Uh, subscribe if you have not done so already. Uh, you can click the uh, subscribe button and click the bell that is right next to it so you get notified whenever we post a new video. Yes, I saw that piece of fur flying as well. Uh, you can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the like. Uh, and of course you can like and share the video if you so choose to do that. Um, uh, other than that, I think that's all I got. That's all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.